Hello and welcome back to the channel. What we have for this video are two of what I think are possibly the finest fruit machines ever made. We have got Bell Fruits Double Chance on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have got Mayday's Screenplay. On the left hand side here, double chance, £4.80 jackpot tokens, £2.40 cash. Screenplay here, this is the upgraded version where we got £3 cash and £6 tokens, but that was originally released with £2.40 and £4.80, just the same as double chance. Now, I will say up front here, there are no methods in this video, there's no tricks, there's no cheats, there's no emptiers, there's nothing like that going on, it is purely just me gassing for probably far longer than is required to get the point across but i don't want to miss sell this video this is not a trick cheat emptier style video it's just me chatting about these old fruit machines reminiscing a bit getting a little bit dewy eyed all that kind of thing but please do be aware of that up front because i don't want to miss sell this as some kind of oh i never knew there was an empty on double chance if there is i don't know about it and this video will certainly not feature it so what's the big the big deal with these two machines. I think these are possibly the the, the the very definition of what makes fruit machines so dreadfully addictive and compelling because they are both masterpieces of the genre. Now, Double Chance here is, I think it's the very first fruit machine that I ever played in a pub and we're going back to the back end of 1990 here I'd moved back to Manchester I'd spent a few years down in Chelmsford I'd moved back to Manchester and met up with my old friends from senior school and we we started college together in September of 1990 and what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to plan to go to the pub, because that was what you did. Not least because there wasn't much else to do. We're going back to 1990 here. There was, no, there was no internet, there were no mobile phones, there was no Facebook, there was no... You know, there was like one telly in the house which your parent or parents ruled with an iron fist. If you wanted to watch something that they didn't want to watch, then you were shit out of luck. So you kind of went to the pub because it was... It was an opportunity to go and do something and see people and, and, and get out of the home environment and, and, you know, meet with other people. So we all plan to try and go to the pub. And bear in mind that we're all 16 and a half. And this one, nope, that's for a bit. There we are. That's the picture I'm looking for. The Royal Oak in Radcliffe. So we all lived within we all lived within half a mile of each other so this is one of the very first I, th I think this is possibly the first pub that 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 we went in and of course when you're 16 and a half you know you're underage so you do the uh, you're dreadfully polite oh hello could i get two pints of bitter and a pint of lager please i'm an adult really and you know the landlord of the bar would look at you and they'd be like yeah all right then but it was kind of like a rite of passage and i think in a lot of pubs that they kind of gave you a bit of latitude it was almost like a gentleman's agreement as if you didn't act like a bunch of twats and just kind of bought your drinks and behaved yourselves and you'd get served and that was fine and we, we could get served in there we could get served in the royal oak and i do remember very very clear this is the back end of 1990 they had a double chance in there and this is I think perhaps the first fruit machine that I played in a pub and I was absolutely entranced with it right from the start notwithstanding I mean it just looks great the attract mode the lamps the physicality of the machine I loved everything about it and that was before I even started playing it so let's just put some cash in here let's put a fiver in now not quite sure what the volume level is like there. Hopefully that's not too loud on the video. Now, I haven't done any uh, autoplay or anything like this. This is just left uh, in the state it was the last time I played it. And, oh, now what we can do, we can exchange straight over. And this, to me, is the definition of amusement with prizes. They absolutely nailed it with this in that... Oh, there we are. That's, that's a good start for a winning streak, isn't it? We'll, we'll go lower on that. Come on. There we are. And even this, I mean, this here is like an early version 
of a mega streak. If you think about it, this is. I know we all talk about mega streaks in the seventy pound days and the, the hundred pound jackpot days, but Bell Fruit were doing this, you know, twenty eight years ago. That they they had this concept of of the mega streak, so it will always go to two forty, and it didn't go on there. Now the one thing that I that caught my attention about this was the skill cache there, the skill cache at that point on the blue trail. And the thing with the skill cache was that it was a genuine skill cache. So right from, from my first encounter with this machine, I was entranced by the idea that you could actually win money at something if you got good enough at it. And at the time, I was quite good at skill caches. I'm probably, if, if I, I, I will collect that feature. I'm probably going to embarrass myself terribly. That was a rather unfortunate lose. But at the time, I was pretty good at skill caches. Come on, that, that's going to be an exchange over. And you could get that £2.40 two pound repeater. It would get faster, obviously. Oh, we've got up the, uh, the right-hand side there, which is not quite so good. And that, that was very compelling to me. The idea that if you got good at something... You, you could win the, the £2.40 cash jackpot. Real Match, I mean, we, we learned early on that Real Match would go back to the symbol that was on the first reel if you let it time. Oh, stop a win now. We'll, we're obviously going to exchange there. Uh, Real Match up to a point. I think it stopped at £1. I think it was either pears or the bells was... Oh, I just... Shit, I just exchanged for the cash pot. I didn't actually mean to do that. I meant to take the feature there. Very sorry. Well, that was silly. I, I've spaffed the cash pot for myself there. I did actually press the wrong button. I do apologise. But I played, and again, I, I remember very clearly that the, the evening that we went in, and and we, you know we, we got our our, our our pints each, which we made very slow work of. Because now let's uh, let's collect that because I, I don't think that will. Let's, let's just click on the buttons and let's, I don't think that goes back to a melon. So I basically played this thing most of the evening and I won. By by the end of the evening I had about eighteen pounds more than I'd gone out with or oh it does oh it does go back to a melon. There we are, okay. So what's it after? It's jackpot jackpot BFM, that'll do. Okay, I think we can get that. Way hey, two pounds, there we go. So yeah, we learned that back in the day, that, that, that you could let real match time out and it would go back to what it was on. I didn't remember it going as high as two quid, to be honest. So anyway, yes, yeah, so over the course of the evening, I won um, about 18 quid. And, and went home, and my dad was still up, having monopolised the TV for the whole evening. And I reported to him that, that I was very pleased with myself, because I'd won like 18 quid on this fruit machine. And he was like, a son of mine! Gambling, I'll not have it. Yeah, he was not not happy. So, hey, best thing you can do, lad, is keep that money and never play it again. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a teenager. Teenagers are stupid, so I thought I knew best. And ah, what do you know, old man? I, I'm I'm going to keep winning all the money out of these things. You'll see. And yeah, well, yeah, we know how that one finished up. Not very well at all. Now then, let's just embarrass myself on this. I used to be quite good at this and could. Could hit 240 fairly regular. Ooh, hang on. Okay, there we go. We'll keep going. Whoop. Okay, can't count. Oh, come on. What? 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 Oh, bollocks. I, I did actually miss that then as well. It doesn't cheat. So that's the thing. I did actually miss that then. So, yeah, me, me dad was not impressed. He, he, he was not convinced that, <laughs> that fruit machines were the uh, the way <laughs> to be financially successful. But you have to remember at the time, I was doing a paper round for like th £4 a week or £5 a week or something. So the idea that you could play one of these things and win, you know, like three weeks' wages was fairly compelling. I think we'll carry on there. Oh, now, this is where it's slightly... Uh, What's stop and step? I don't think it... No, that's, that's going to lose, isn't it? Yeah, that'll be a loss. So, I, I was absolutely entranced with this right from the start, right from the get-go. Was completely absorbed by them and thus started. I, I do blame this machine for starting me on the path of ruin of fruit machines because it has everything that a fruit machine needs. It's low stake and low prizes. Now, the com the, the great thing about low stakes and low prizes is that you can easily win the jackpots. I mean, and the time with the tokens 
Machines were very, very clearly split in a £2.40 cash jackpot and a £4.80 token jackpot. And you could see that very, very often. It was not rare. It was not kind of um, cordoned off. You could achieve that several times in the same section. You know what? I can't talk and do that at the same time at all. Uh, you could achieve that several times in the same session. So... The, the jackpot was achievable. It was available to you, right? I am now going to just... I don't want to just... This is, it's not great video material, is it? Just an old man trying to hit a skill stop. But I am going to have to shut up to try and hit this. Hang on. Just bear with me, please. Okay. Can't talk and do this at the same time. Or, indeed, not talk and do it at the same time, so it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll not worry about that. You know it's taking pity on you when it, when it gives you a bonus repeat. So, I mean, I honestly think the fruit machines then were as they are now. I just wouldn't have been captivated by them in the way that I was. That The thing back, back at this time was, I would normally take that there, but uh, oh, I should have taken that there. Because modern fruit machines, you, you, you walk up to a, a modern fruit machine with, with a fiver or a tenner, a 15 quid, you may not even get the board. You're certainly not going to even remotely expect to get a jackpot or anything close to a jackpot or anything like that. So that's not necessarily the fault of modern fruit machines. They, they now have to work with this £100 jackpot. But the machines at this time had, had that combination of of being easy to play with skill elements and you could realistically expect to get decent wins, the, the cash jackpot, if you will, and the token jackpot on a moderately regular basis. And I guess the other thing, thinking about it, is that even if they were being done by pro players, as was often the case, not that I think this machine, or not that I'm aware that this machine had anything on it, you know, there was a limit to how dead they could be, so, so you'd always have a kind of, um, they'd never be that far away for, from letting you get the feature, get some wins, and, and at least have half a chance. I mean, overall, yes, I lost massively, and this this is from, the, in fact, this machine represents the start of my ruination, effectively, so it's kind of bittersweet memories. Now, on the one hand, I can appreciate what a great fruit machine it is and how well it does the whole AWP thing but it is tempered somewhat, we'll go for that oh how dare you it's tempered somewhat by the fact that I am very much aware that this this machine does represent the the start of my downfall and, and, and a period of my life which lasted for some years and was, was not particularly pleasant in many ways largely due to Gambling. So, let, what have we got there? Let's. Um, shall we collect stop a win? Because it can put the jackpot in on this. Da -da. What's the best we've got there? Oh, Jesus! What is that there? Is it? Is it plums? Am I being silly there? Is that? Is it plums? The best thing that we've got? I think it may be. You know, that's awful, isn't it? I think it's after the winning streak. There. Oh, and I missed it as well. <laughs> Not to worry. So that is double chance. It's. For, for my money, this is the classic textbook ex example of how a fruit machine can work and work well and be very, very compelling to, to play and to keep playing. I'm going to have another go at skill cash. If I can take... Right, I'm, again, do bear with me. I'm, I'm going to shut up and try and hit the skill cash. Okay, that's that one done. Okay. Come on, let, let's, let's get it once. Oh dear. There we are. Come on. Okay. Come on, one more, one more, one more. Oh! Blah, da, 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 da. Sorry, that was the worst. Oh, how annoying. I thought, thought, thought I was actually going to take it out. Uh, yeah, I think I did miss it. I was ever so slightly off there. But, you, I mean, that's the point there. I, even though I'm, I'm playing this now, if this is an emulated machine with a £4.80 jack, token jackpot, I'm going there for £2.40 cash. 
and there's no real money at stake. I'm doing this in the year 2018, you know, like 17 and a half years since I actually played this machine for real money. And yet I was immediately completely captivated by it. And th there's something about these machines whereby, yes, it does happen once, once in a while where basically where the manufacturer fucks up and there's some low down feature where you can get like the jackpot or a, a, a decent win but generally speaking it's by accident and this is where all these emptiers and methods and cheats tend to come from it's where they fucked up and it's not by design and yet on this machine the second feature up on that side there is absolutely a clear invitation for you to take a winning streak if you are good enough to hit it. And that right from day one for me, that was met what, what made these things so exciting and so interesting and so compelling to play. And if we go over to screenplay here, this is almost, to me, I, I, th I think fruit machines have regressed. They've almost devolved since the days of machines like screenplay because for my money Mega absolutely nailed it with this this was a fantastic fruit machine again and i say that again once again with uh, kind of bittersweet memories because these things were so compelling to play and you just would want to play them and play them and play them and in the case of screenplay you knew it had a streak like all maygays at the time you knew it had a, a 30 pound streak in it and maygay did a really good job of it so on, on the one hand i kind of doff my cap to them and say yeah you absolutely nailed it with this one boys but part of me wishes that they hadn't been quite so good at it because um there was nothing more I wanted to do than go to the pub or go to the arcade to play these machines. So just uh, as a note here, this is what the actual real screenplay machine looked like. This is a picture of the actual machine. And as you can see there, it's got a quite small uh, old-fashioned CRT tube in the top glass there. Now, what Pook has done with this DX layout... Um, He's done a PDX of this where he's made the screen on the top much bigger and he's kind of rejig things around a bit. He has done a straight DX of this, i.e. an accurate representation of this. But what you will find is that when you're playing it in the emulator, even on a fairly big screen, I've got a 1440p 27-inch screen here. Even even on a generously sized screen, it's too small to actually see the, 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 the TV screen comfortably so what Pook has done here is a very good piece of PDX layout work he's re rejigged this to make the screen bigger on the top glass and quite frankly my personal feeling is that if Maygay could have made it like this back in the day they would have done it I think they were just constrained by the technology of the time and cost I mean flat screen panels weren't a thing back then so you've got to imagine that this thing has got a real sort of cathode cathode ray tube in the back of it and obviously the the bigger that you make the screen the deeper the tube has to be so I suspect that was just the limit of what they could fit in the cabinet but if they could have done it they would have put a nice big screen like this in so I choose to play the PDX layout that Pete uh, that Pook has done here and not the straight DX there we are, and let's just put a fiver through through this. Again, I remember these machines being very, very popular, and I remember really, really liking them as well. Had a full sample pack on it as well. All the sounds on this were sampled. Well, there was a couple of chip tunes, I think, when you put the money in and something like that. There were a couple of tunes on there which were the chip tunes, but most of these were sampled sounds on these machines. And just a, a really good selection of, of quality. There we are. We're going to get... Uh, Okay, now we can press duck shoot. I hated duck shoot. I never liked duck shoot. I will gamble. I, c I could never do it very well. Never quite got behind with it. The ones that I liked on this were night time. I would oh god. I would always go for night time, and I'd always go for wind series. The uh, hot spots one was quite good as well. Uh, oh, two nudges. There we are. That'll do. Well, we can't lose on that, can we? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll reveal the feature, but we're obviously not going to collect cash. I mean, why, why did this... Why did this... More samples as well. Great samples on these old things. I don't, I don't know why the, this, this era of the video screen... And it can... It gives you, like, little uh, quiz challenges as well. You can get um, answer questions for, for nudges and for... Um, 
for cash fat prizes sometimes. Why this never really caught on and it kind of disappeared. That the, Mege did two or three of these. There was a football themed one, I think one other. I think they did a club themed one that had a video screen as well. And that was that. That they never did them again. Maybe the tech was too unreliable. Maybe the the screens didn't work for long enough or something like that. But it was a great shame because these were. I mean, if, if Fruit Machines today were as much fun as this was, I think they'd get a lot more play. Because this was a great Fruit Machine. And it also benefited again from sensible stake to price ratios. The jackpot was achievable. The cash repeater was achievable. You know, any player could feel like they had a chance of doing okay on this. So that was... Let me just see if... I, I used to quite pride myself on being being quite good at this. Uh, I don't think it helps. I think um, I think these were better on cathode ray tubes. Uh, I think it was that one. I'm not sure modern sort of LED screens are the best way to do this. Oh, shit. Was it the end or the second one? Oh, it was the end. There we go. It's getting very, very fast now. I think that was the first one. Okay, one more. Come on. And I think that was the first one again. Come on, let's have three quid. Oh, get the fuck in there. There we are. Three pound repeater. And that's the point. Again, this comes back to exactly what I was saying about... Uh, hey, and a repeat. Fantastic. Exactly what I was saying about um, double chance here. It's, it's just that... The, the jackpot, the cash jackpot was always achievable. It wasn't this kind of, some kind of remote thing that you would, that you would, that you would never even get close to. It was always available. It was always achievable. And that was, I think, what, what made these old fruit machines far better incarnations of amusement with prizes. Something that has been completely lost now on modern fruit machines. Because when you think that machines today can block at a fiver, a hundred pound jackpot machine can block at a fiver, which is lower than the jackpot that we had on a fruit machine in, in sort of 1990, 1991. So it's very easy to understand how unsatisfying they are to play. And it's just like this, I mean, what a genius little touch, just giving you a little um, a little quiz, <laughs> little quiz that pops up once in a while. Um, so we, we can't actually get a win or a... Um, a cash win there, or we can't, nudges won't give us anything, but we can at least have a, where is Orly Airport? You know what, I generally don't, genuinely don't know. It's not in Vienna, I don't, I don't, don't travel. That's the worst question ever for me, I, I never go abroad, don't like it. There we are, let's have a look, okay, that, not much there. Now once in a while these things would come round for a streak. I remember these as having a, a reasonable, reasonably solid £30 streak in them, which is what Maygate at the time had. And yes, if you caught them wrong, I mean, all the genius design in the world isn't going to detract from the fact that if you caught it wrong, you would lose on it. But even then, it, there was a limit to how much you could lose because the, these old fruit machines did sort of tend to give you a get-off point at eventually you get a little bit back and then you could walk but as my experience was at the time that if, if you just lost a bit on enough machines you would you know eventually lose all your money so I'm not there yeah, let's take that I'm not making them out to be some kind of panacea of you know like gambling where you could never lose no that that's not the case at all oh come on never did get to the top but that they were certainly a friendlier, I think, proposition than, than what is available to us today. Okay, the one thing that we haven't had up to now is the screenplay thing. You've got to fill in all the there. We go. If you've got to fill in all the little snapper board things there, and your bars add to that. So your single bar adds one, your double bar adds two, and if you fill up to the top, you get a kind of barcodey style thing. Which we should probably just see that, uh, but like I said, I'm not I'm not imparting any fantastic information about these. It was purely just to talk about how well designed and how good fruit machines used to be from a sort of player perspective, uh, an appeal 
to to sort of normal people in the pubs because back in the early 90s the, the fruit machines got played that they, they, they were like a standard social thing in the pubs it wasn't like this niche interest where, where you know people would just kind of come in and they'd be there for nothing other than the fruit machine they'd play the fruit machine and they'd bugger off again they were part of the pub they, they were part of the pub environment oh six two seven eight i think i got that hang on a minute so six two seven eight and I, you know what i missed the last one i did actually miss the last one I can't. Oh, there we are. I took a guess. I did get the six two seven eight, but I missed the last one. You should you should normally be uh, paying a little bit more attention than that, but it worked out okay in the end. Oh, shall we have another go? Let's have another go at night time. Go on then. I can't. I'm not sure I'll get it twice, but we'll have a go. That's some of the chip music there. That, that's not a sample on that. Oh Christ! I think that was the. Uh, Got me mouse in the way there as well. Let's have one more. I think that was the end again, right hand side. You've got to focus. You've got to like zone in. That was. Oh, ball no, I missed that one. Okay, fair and square. I missed that one. So there we are. I don't want to kind of. I mean, th there's not much else going on in this video, so I don't want to kind of drag it out past the point. Oh, trivia challenge. Two nudges. Well, we can uh, obviously it's not going to be up there, but general knowledge. I, I failed so hard on the last one. Um, oh, whale! We get that one. Dun, 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 dun. Hold after no. It could hold, usually. I think in my, as I re recall, if it held after nudges for a jackpot, that meant it was going to streak. That was a very rare hold. So. I think that's about it for this one. Two great old fruit machines that I have mixed feelings about for, for reasons I've just articulated in this video. That if they weren't so bloody good at what they did, I don't think I would have ever have ended up as addicted for as long as I did. But you've got to kind of, you've you've got to doff your cap to them for being very I won't do another night time because that'd be let's go on a cash grid. I never much liked I didn't really like scratch card, but but we'll have a go. It was always... I never had... Oh, this go. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, yeah. Two pound. It seemed a hard one to get a decent win off scratch card. But, again, it's a it's a nice little mini feature. And in some regards, it seems like such a simple idea to, to, to use this screen for, for a load of little mini features. But I think it worked really well. So, for... Co concentration I was horrible at. Okay, we're obviously going to lose that. So, there you are. I, I won't go on. I mean, we're pushing up towards the half-hour mark now anyway, but I think it was important just to get a couple of these older machines in just on the strength of what they were. Not not for any cheats, not for any emptiers, not for any methods. Just to, in many ways, kind of point out the, the stark contrast between what fruit machines used to be and what they are now. Because what they are now, really, they are just gambling machines there with a hundred pound jackpot or 150 pound jackpot on the betcoms if they go on or the bell fruits which can repeat to 200 quid or whatever they are just they're, they're old-fashioned club machines in disguise you know when clubbers had 150 or 200 pound jackpots but they were they were only allowed to be played in clubs and and these fruit machines the pub fruit machine or the arcade fruit machine was a very different beast that had this concept of amusement with prizes where it had interesting features and skillful features and Mayday took it to the next level with screenplay here and then you look at what we've got now which is just turgid unplayable boring shite that you've got absolutely no reason to put any money in whatsoever unless you kind of know something and you can think you know you think you can win that's the only reason i i play fruit machines really is because i think i can take a few bob out of them even though there are some vestiges of the old me that remembers what these kind of fruit machines were like and why they were so compelling but there's there's very little of it left but in terms of fruit machine history i think it's important to understand where we came from and these two machines here are two great old amusement with prizes machines 
So that's all for this video. Sorry there wasn't any tricks or empties. I'll, I'll get back to those in, in future videos. But I may just do other videos in future which are just yapping about the machines in question. But if, if that wasn't what you come here for, then I do apologise. If you stuck me this long, then thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see you next time. But that's it for now. Cheers and goodbye.